Hello everyone, welcome back to the Germix Bootcamp. Today we will do a PCA analysis with TASL 5.2. And because the last video was, well, a bit dragged out and long, this time we will try to do it fresh and quick. Still, we will do all the steps starting from the beginning, including quality control. So we have the tutorial data open, and what we do, the first thing is the quality control. We talked about quality control a lot, so we will not go through in extreme detail right now, but well, there is this filter tab here or filter option. And first we filter the genotype data. And the first thing is to get rid of the SNPs that have too many missing. We set it to about 10%. So as explained in the last video, there is 281 individuals here. And then, well, we would allow maximum 10% of missing. That is 28 and 281 minus, minus 28 is 253. So this is the number that goes in here for this particular tutorial data. We also get rid of the fixed SNPs and those with a really small allele frequency. So the site minimum allele frequency, we would set to, for example, 0.05. We get rid of the minor allele state. So if there are any sequencing errors and also we don't want any indels for this particular run. We press okay and then it's already filtered remaining with 2,418 SNPs. We also do a second filtering and this time for the individuals and we delete all the individuals which have more than, let's say 10% missing data. Well, we press okay here and actually we have a message that actually there are no individuals that have more than 10% missing data, which is a good thing for us. And we have these 281 individuals and 2,418 SNPs for the PCA analysis. So we had all this in the last video on the filtering and quality control. So we went through quite in a rush, but here we slow down a little bit and go to the PCA analysis. So in order to do that, there is an analysis menu here and there is a part of it which says relatedness and it has a option called PCA or basically clickable part which says performs principal component analysis. So we click on that and we have this wonderful screen here. Again, as last time, there is a help button here that actually explains everything briefly, what is happening in this small window. So what are the options? and what are the options doing for us. So there is a small description for each. There are the values, the permissible values and the defaults. If you don't change anything, these defaults will be in play. Perhaps one thing to note here is this checkbox, which says covariance or correlation. So you have to choose one. And according to this small description, if this box is checked, then the analysis will do an eigenvalue decomposition of the covariance matrix. And if it's unchecked, it will do or use a correlation matrix. And covariance matrix is better for the genotypes as we have now. Or if you want to do a PCA analysis of phenotypes, then you are better off with correlation matrix. So right now we are doing PCA for the genotypes. So we need and have this one checked in. We want the number of uh, principal components. And well, it says five here, which is good enough. Anyway, we would like to plot at the end uh, the first two, as it is quite usual for principal component analysis. Well, we want eigenvalues. So we just say return eigenvalues and also eigenvectors. So we go ahead and just press OK here. And in a short while, we have the principal components computed for each of the individuals, principal component one, two, three, four, and five, as we requested. Also, we have information on the individual principal components here. So we have the eigenvalue and well, we need to extend this a little bit, the proportion of the total. So this one is the proportion of the variance explained. And this is then the cumulative 
variance explained basically summing up the numbers from this proportion total. Interestingly enough, as in other places in the TASL software, the counting starts also here from zero. So it just, this is also something to keep in mind. So we have the numbers here, but we'd much rather see a nice picture as it is common for the principal component analysis. We can do this by plotting the results also within TASL. We can do this by going here to the results and then pressing chart. And here we are presented with various options and the graph type we change to XY scatter plot. On the X axis, we would like to have the PC one or principal component one. On the Y axis, we would like to have the principal component two. And right away, we have a really neat and reasonably descriptive PCA plot for the tutorial data from TASL 5.2. If you would like to change the visuals, that is also possible with the properties button here, where you have a different option to change the title, the plot, and other characteristics of the PCA plot. For example, if I would like to change the background color, we go to plot here. There is also things on axis and also appearance and the background paint could be changed to anything you want. Okay, okay, and now we have a totally different color. There are also some other options. For example, you want to learn something about the proportion of explained variance. You can plot this a similar way as before. So going into the results, then chart, and then here you go to the bar chart. And for example, you want to plot the proportion of total based on the principal components. And well, also you need to click this box here. When you do that, you see that there is a quite of an expected curve when the first principal components explain the most, and then this is gradually decreasing. If you want to plot the cumulative proportion, you just change the appropriate selection, and then you see what's happening with the mean cumulative proportion by principal components. Once you are happy with your selection and the settings that you made, then of course you, what you can do is also make everything bigger, also play around with the axis, titles, font sizes, and colors, and at the end, so here is a neat little save button and you can save it as a picture on your computer and include this principal component analysis picture to any relevant documents. So you see it is rather easy and quick to make a PCA plot with TASL just in a few clicks. So go on and try it out also yourself. For today, it was everything from me. Thank you very much for your time and have a really nice day. For this particular tutorial data. For this particular tutorial. For example, I'm not satisfied with the background here and I want to put it to uh, whatever, let's say this one. Okay, okay, and it doesn't change anything.